Hello everybody, good day to you, welcome back. It's uh, kind of bright and sunshiny and overcast and it's pre, pre-hurricane pre day. Uh, I forget what the thing's name is, Idalia or Idalia. Uh, it's about 80 miles uh, offshore right now in the Gulf of Mexico and it's coming this way in a northeastern track. So where I'm at, we're gonna catch the, the west side. It's gonna be like the south side, the southwest corner uh, of the storm. So we're gonna get a bunch of wind from uh, from the southwest direction. Um, they're talking about 80 mile per hour wind or something like that. So it's it's not, it's nothing to scoff at, but it's not the end of the world right here. Uh, a little bit of minor prep work uh, should uh, should handle the situation uh, and that's what I've just finished doing and that's also what I'm on my way to go do uh, we set everything up at the house and put all the toys away and clean the porches off uh, I'm not gonna shutter the house except maybe the back porch on my south side I uh, haven't decided yet I'll probably wait until the storms actually here before I end up uh, deciding whether or not to put any boards up um, but right now, I'm, we're going to the shop. I need to get, uh, like I said, the cars inside. We'll clean up some tools. I've got to grab all my flashlights and backup gear and all that good stuff. Uh, I don't need to hoard gas and water because I stay in a state of readiness at all times because it's the 2020s and you never know. Uh, so I don't need to go and do the, the Walmart slash Costco slash Sam's Club freak out shopping spree and, buy 1500 bucks worth of batteries and whatnot because we're already good at my house I don't have to participate in that activity uh, don't need any fuel either I, I have some diesel in the truck and the van's got half a tank I might fill this thing back up if we can get get uh, if I can find fuel today I've got 40 gallons of non-ethanol recreation fuel at the house that's a uh, that's for the mowers usually but uh, I refilled those tanks yesterday just in case I need to run the generator just in case. I don't, I don't think we're going to get a bunch of power outages. This, the storm doesn't seem to have the feeling that the more ominous storm cells in the past have brought with them. So I think we'll be okay. But you never know. These things can do... They do things. They do things you don't expect them to do. I don't expect it to do the things that I don't expect it to do, but it's always possible. So, stay prepared. Anyways, uh, we're about halfway there. Uh, need to get back to the building, open up the shop real quick, collect the emergency supplies to load up back in the van, and then we'll bring all the cars inside, fill the lifts up, get everything up in the air, remove the valuables near uh, near the windows or from near the windows, uh, put uh, electronics inside of toolboxes, and maybe garbage bag them. I don't know. I think my doors will be okay. So I don't... I, I haven't really decided yet. I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare for the worst because I would hate to have this storm ramp up later tonight and then ooh trailers <laughs> i'd hate to have this storm ramp up later tonight and then i'm sitting there with doubt wondering if i could have done things better in the shop so i'm just gonna prep the shop for uh for like a two-day shutdown we're actually we're actually we're on a two-day shutdown because i didn't get any work done yesterday and i didn't get any work done today so this is day two of no working stupid storm it's ruining the economy so anyway, so I will check back in with you guys once we get there and uh, we'll get the doors open, take a, an assessment of the situation. Oh, hi oh, we're hydroplaning a lot. Check that out. Yeah, we'll go assess the situation and uh, we will proceed to take action from there. So stay tuned because this is going to be a very good video. Happening Z Hood. Yeah, that's great. We have stacks of Mustang. See this right here? This is exactly why you need to have good tires in Florida. Although it's not raining, we can clearly see there is a bunch of ruts full of water. And this is the stuff that will make you hydroplane, potentially lose control of your vehicle if you have crappy bad ball tires. Always have good tires in Florida, especially during the wet season. Oh, no, we don't. We're not doing this power outage business again. What is this? What are you guys doing? Oh, yeah, no, we're not worried about that. I oh, need to move over for stopped emergency vehicles. Yeah, we're not worried about that. Someone just ran into the telephone pole. That's all that happened here. Okay. Yeah, they just passed a law in Florida, which is a common sense law, and I do agree with it. 
It just passed the law where if you're able to move over for a stopped emergency vehicles with their emergency lights indicated that you are required to move over a lane when passing them. Now, although that is common sense, and I've been doing that for years because that's just what you do, you don't fly past a parked car four feet away from it, you're supposed to move over, but they did pass a law here in Florida. Having said that, because the law exists, they're going to have to go out and start enforcing it for uh, the sake of public awareness. So I wouldn't want to be the guy that got caught that did not follow the rule or the law. I don't think we need a law. I just think common sense should prevail. But we don't have to. Uh, they're they're going to be out enforcing that. So if you fail to move over, they'll probably pull you over. So I don't want to. I'm not going to participate in that. Oh, the rain's starting to pick up again. Nothing crazy yet, but we did just start to get more precipitation and the wind just bumped back up. It goes from like a mild wind to no wind and then it'll bump back up for a little while then it drops off. It'll become uh, consistent and steady uh, as time moves on. But for right now we're in a nice calm easy lull. All right guys so right now we're kind of in a waiting game until the end of the day. Uh, like I said I'm here to collect some flashlights and a few supplies in case our power goes out for tomorrow or anything like that. Um, not a huge deal. But uh, having said all that, we're kind of low on the inventory of cars that need to come in. Uh, waiting on parts for this thing, I'm waiting on parts, a couple things for the red Mustang. Uh, the Monte Carlo's to the body shop, waiting on parts for that Kia over there. We're always waiting on parts for Troy's Jeep. Uh, let's see, that one's done, but we're not uh, setting that one out right now because the owner lives kind of far away and we're doing hurricane stuff today. So that's just gonna camp here until the storm's over with. Uh, so again, I don't have much really to do. Maybe I can uh, get some work done on the Rubisu out there. That probably is really all that we have left on the uh, on the agenda for this week so far. So um, like I mentioned last night uh, on the live stream, I did receive the Time Cert thread repair kit uh, for this engine block with the damaged, uh, the damaged thread in there. You can see we've gotten the thing extracted, but the, uh, the actual threads inside of that hole are kind of boogered up. You can see them down there. Uh, we can fit a bolt into those threads and it will thread in. But my concern is, is once torque is applied, it can start to yield those threads and it will lose its uh, clamping force, uh, thus causing the water pump to become loose right here and it'll leak. So uh, rather than run that risk of having a, a problem due to a halfway repair, we're gonna go ahead and do a full on repair on those threads. Uh, like I said, I have received and ordered a time cert kit. This is, uh, it's similar to a Healy coil, but a little bit different. A Healy coil will insert actual threads. This thing puts in a uh, double-sided threaded insert. So the inside is the uh, M6 threads for the factory, factory bolts for the water pump. And then the outside is a new thread that's going to be cut into the aluminum. So we're gonna drill that, we're gonna tap it, we're gonna cut it. We're gonna screw this thing in with an installer tool after we countersink the, uh, the surface right here, the face of it, because we have to fit that little lip right there. So we're gonna bottom this thing out, countersink it, thread it, tap it, not in that order. And then once that's done, we will have a fresh, stronger than new set of threads in order to clamp down this water pump. So uh, I hope this works. We probably won't know if it's gonna work until after the car is, or the engine's back in the car and it's up to operating temperature. So, um, well, let's keep our fingers crossed and hope that this operation turns into a success. So following our destructions on our time cert thread repair set, we're going to need to drill out the existing threads in the engine block. So I'm going to assume that we need the drill bit that has been supplied with the kit. Yeah, that's supposed to pull, pull the old threads out of it. So let's see how that fits in there. Yeah, this bit is larger than the existing threads, so that's the one to remove what's already there. Then we can drill it again and countersink it and then tap the hole and then install the, uh, the insert. So let's do this together. I'm excited to see how this is gonna work out. I know you are too, so uh, let's go ahead and get to it. Let me fire up my drill. I really hope this works because we have put a considerable amount of effort into trying to, uh, to fix this situation. If you guys have been here since the uh, first repair attempt on this video, after that water pump bolt broke off and I spent hours trying to extract it while it was in the chassis, we ended up ordering another replacement engine. And that engine disappeared in Virginia and uh, the order was canceled. 
So because of that, I had to start over from square one. The problem is the square one had no more of these 2.5 liter Subaru engines available. And the two twos that were available were silly high mileage and had not had any work done to it. So uh, we went back to the original plan after the replacement engine plan failed. And now I have to actually fix this. By some miracle, while this thing was out of chassis and here on the bench, we were actually able, since there's more space here to work with, able to get that old bolt extracted. Uh, I will put a link to that video and the first video when I actually broke, broke the bolts off down in this video's description. That way, if you want to go back and refresh yourself or if you miss those two videos, uh, they'll be available to you after you're done watching this one. So we're only really going to get one good shot at this. So uh, let's get started. I'm going to throw a little bit of cutting oil in those threads there. Move it on up. All right, guys, here goes nothing. Got the Milwaukee drill. Let's pull these, uh, pull these threads out. Trying to get this thing centered left and right and up and down. I don't want to drill sideways. Ooh, that was a nasty bite. It bites on and yanks the bit in as soon as it gets traction. I don't like that. High speed. Just peck at it a little bit. There we go. Yeah, there wasn't much left of those threads after after last time around. Now, this is a blind hole, meaning it does not pass all the way through. And the instructions tell me to mark my bit and measure it, but I can see the bottom of the hole, so we're not gonna concern ourselves too much with marking it. That looks pretty good. Yes, yeah, we're we're bottomed out here. Oh, by the way, that is not a crack in the engine block right there. It's not a crack. It looks like a crack, but it's just a just casting flaw. If it is a crack, I can't see where it migrates and progresses to. So I hope it's not. Alrighty, let's get those threads cleaned out a little bit. Break clean. A little bit of straw action here. Get rid of the debris. Alrighty, on to step two with our counter bore. We've got a, uh, well, the bit is supposed to center in the hole we just drilled, which it does. Then we've got these cutting flutes on it, and then it's supposed to stop on these flats right here. See that flat? There's a flat. Let's get a little bit of zoom action here. Focus. Okay, so we've got a flat right here. There's a flat, there's a flat and there's a flat. So we're supposed to use this bit to cut into the face of the block up until we reach that flat. And that flat is designed to cut the counter bore to house the flange right here on the end of the insert. So let us drill that thing out next. All right, let's get this thing set up in the drill. Not like so. It's running straight and true, this is good. Make sure it's nice and tight. Let's get some lube in there on our cutting surface. I'll carry away our debris. And beginning the counter bore now. It said slow, slow speed, light to medium pressure. I'm keeping an eye on the drill head on the other side here to make sure it doesn't hit the engine block. There we go. Lubricant. How do we do? Not quite there yet. All right, let's take it up a notch.
Okay, we do have a good counter bore, but we have not bottomed out the flutes on the tool yet. I think we are there. A little bit more, another millimeter. That's it. There we go, I'm satisfied with that. This is good, let's give it a rinse. See, brake clean can be used at slow speed. All right. Okay, we do not need the drill bit anymore, so we're gonna put that back in its little protective sheath, and that's gonna go back into the box. Same story with the uh, counter bore tool. Put that thing back inside of its case, and now we need to get out the tap, tap these threads, or tap this hole in order to thread the exterior or the uh, outer diameter uh, of our insert. All right, got a tap coming in. It's set up on the snap-on T-handle that will drive the tap, and the T-handle will give me as much control as I think I need in order to uh, get this hole threaded. So let's get started on our tap here. We're gonna run this down all the way to the bottom. Now again, this is a blind hole, and because it's a blind hole and it doesn't pass all the way through, we have to make sure we don't keep going after it bottoms out and risk damaging uh, the block or breaking a hole through the back of it into a water jacket. Because then I will be buying another engine. And we've already established that's going to be kind of hard to do. Okay, so it's starting to bite. I'm giving it the uh, measurement status or measurement treatment here with my icrometer and it looks like we're running in straight, not cross-threading the tap, which is good. It's going fairly smoothly also. This is very soft aluminum. There we go, picking up some speed. Let's give it a wiggle, that feels really good. A little more. Let's back her out now, see if she's gonna come back. A little bit of resistance on the reverse. So far, so good. We're going full send. Cutting, 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 we're going in, we're going in. I see some debris floating in that oil in there. That's good, that means it's carrying it away from the cut site. And we're bottomed out. Let's go ahead and back this out. And then we can inspect our progress. Very good. Looks good. Looks really good, actually. You guys see in there? Let's get some lumens on that subject. Yeah, those threads are looking real nice. I like it. Awesome, all right. Let's prepare our insert and then get that thing set up. A Little bit more cleaner for the wind. Let's get that oil out. It's gonna carry out any debris that's in there. It's full of metal shavings from the tapping procedure. Flush that out. So at this point we have an oversized hole that has been threaded and it has a counter bore to accommodate our insert. So now we need to get out our insert installer that's gonna thread into the insert and then we can use this installer to drive the insert into those new threads. Incoming loud blowgun noises.
All righty, so this right here, this is our insert. Focus, please. And I don't know if you guys can pick up on the camera, but this is actually not circular. It is square shaped. So the thing is threaded, but it is in a square shape, and that's designed to put extra internal friction on these threads and help to guide in our insert right here. So we're gonna get this started, thread it in. And right here, I'm already feeling some good resistance on this uh, this insert driver here. So now I will take, and I don't even think these instructions indicate to do so, but on the larger ones, they I have seen them where they require thread lock. So I am just gonna install some thread lock here just for some finalized security. We're gonna go ahead and thread this insert into position, thread it down. And I think it's locking in. It's not wanting to go any farther. I'd like to put some more torque on that if possible. Let's get the T-handle out and see how tight we can get that insert. I'm watching it turn right here. So it appears that that counter bore was deeper than I think I needed. And it looks like the insert has bottomed out and stopped threading in. I'm gonna go a little further. Let's see what it does. How about I'm break it off? We'll have to weld it and drill it out. Okay, that's pretty tight. We're coming up on a lot of torque here. I think we're good. Let's go ahead and back this guy out. Gravity. All right, my tool is coming out and the insert is staying in position. Beautiful. That's what we want to see. Very good. All right, let's test it. I have here a brand new replacement OEM Subaru water pump bolt. I did get new bolts for this little idea. And that bolt is threading. It's threading in beautifully. Love it. Let's take her back out. And let's go ahead and clean up the surface here and get a uh, get the water pump installed. I think we uh, I think we're nearing a win on this one. I like winning. All right, real quick, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this surface up with some uh, this little polishing device. Light pressure. We're just gonna get rid of all the nasty that's on here. <laughs> I need to polish away all my little scratches and whatnot that are uh, right here on the, the injury site. down and we can prep the water pump installation there we go all right so digging through my timing belt kit we have a replacement water pump unit there she is and I've got a replacement gasket as well as gravity as well as all the bolts here to install this unit with new unbroken unstretched and uncorroded fasteners because broken fasteners is what got us in this mess to begin with so anyway let's get one bolt through that's going to align our our pump right here or our gasket on our pump rather 
Your second one for redundancy. Two is one and one is none, right? Let's get this thing slipped into position here. It's kind of a tight squeeze. There's a little seal for the cam covers right over here. And we don't want to roll that seal and push it out of the way. And that is two bolts that are tight, or two bolts started rather. Two bolts, two bolts, two bolts. We got three, that one, that one. I hope these are all the right length. It seems that they were just a generic part number. And this is the one in question. It's going in smooth. That one's threaded. That one's threaded. All right, they're all threaded. The water pump is in its home. Good. Ding. All right, a couple forward electron clips. Excellent. All righty, beginning actual clicks now. We need to get some torque on these fasteners. There is a click. Another. Another. See that? Let's get this one down here. Clickage. One more up here. I think I got that one already, but no, no, I missed that one. There we go. Let's hit them all again, just to make sure. Everybody's nice and uniform, tight like a tiger. Aha, success guys, we got it. That's a functioning, working, installed, bolted in, thread repaired water pump. Yes, the Subaru will live again. All right, folks, that is going to count for a win for the day. The hundred something dollar time cert thread insert kit has saved this engine. I need to go ahead and bust out the timing set and the gears and the tensioner, get this thing retimed, and then uh, we'll put the covers back on. We'll drop her back in the engine. Uh, that is going to be, of course, after I change the rear crankshaft seal on this. There's no reason to not put a rear main in this while it's here. I don't think we can see it from where we're at, but I do believe it did have a leak. Let's see. We got any oil back there? Maybe. Maybe. Actually, tell you what, we'll shed some light on the subject. Let's see. Do we have oil back on that rear main? It's possible. See those little streaks coming from, where are we at? Right here, see all that? Yeah, that's some oil down there. I think this thing does have a rear main leak. So we're gonna pull that uh, that flex plate off later on after we spin this around once the timing setup is uh, is complete. And we'll toss the rear main seal in this thing. And at that point, it will be ready to go back into our Rubisu, which is great because this thing's been here like four months and I need to actually get off my butt and fix this car. Okay, so now that we've got some traction made with the Subaru engine, we're gonna put that on hold because I need to go back to the hurricane preparedness. Uh, the way we're gonna do this is I'm gonna run that car all the way up. We're gonna run this car all the way up and then we're gonna put more cars underneath of these cars. That's gonna be the plan. So, silver subscribe button. Moving on up. We're gonna go up as high as possible. This is standard uh, hurricane procedure, by the way. This is how we do it every time. Locks are engaged. Let's let it down on the locks for safety. That one didn't click. Okay. We need to go to the next lockdown. So we release, we go down past the lock on this side, engage. There we go, two locks engaged. So that thing's sitting down, no hydraulic pressure. Let's do the same thing with our Mustang over here. 
That's on the lock, good to go. And now we can put cars underneath of these cars and stack these things in. I cannot say that I'm particularly concerned with, uh, with flooding or anything like that. Um, if we do have flooding, it will not be storm surge flooding here. I'm too far inland, but uh, any kind of flooding would be local just from precipitation. So I'm not horribly concerned about it, but it is possible that the wind will push a bunch of water up against the doors and that might allow water to come into the shop. So anything that's electronical, we're going to get that off the floor like battery chargers, um, I don't know, actually there's really not much down there. Uh, we can move the shop back. All that stuff looks good. The toolboxes, I mean, we'd have to come up with 18 inches of water to get inside the boxes. I'm not really concerned about those. The fan has to come off the floor. Yeah, that's pretty much it for what, uh, what needs to be off of the ground. Let's, uh, let's go outside and fetch some cars and start stacking them up down below. We'll start with the Monte Carlo. Now, not all of these, as you can see, are coming into the building, but we're gonna get the, uh, the expensive ones. I know, that's horrible, isn't it? Oh, Ray is classist. Well, not really. I mean, this is a customer's car, and it's worth a lot more than, than that one, and that's not a customer's car, so like things like that get to stay outside. The Toyota gets to stay outside. The burnt down Dodge gets to stay outside, but all the ones that are running and driving and functioning, those come in. Let's get this uh, this bad unit into the building here. Ring, ring. If they fit, that's the big if. If the roof's not gonna fit under the wheels, then we will not be able to proceed. Here we go, squeezing under the Kia. I think we're gonna fit. How are we looking? Yeah, we're good here. We fit. Perfect. All right, parking the auto. Windows up, all the way up. And powering down. Good. Actuator. It's still doing it. Need to fix that. All right, one down, next. All right, Jeep's moving out. The key is gonna come in. We're gonna run the key all the way up and then we'll park some stuff underneath of it. I'm going to fetch the red Mustang. Where are you, keys? Red Mustang, and we're gonna put the red one under the black one. All right, Mustang, you're next. Let's climb on in here. We're restarting the engine. Oh yeah, the rear view mirror. Forgot I have to fix that still. Ah, sounds good. All right, we'll squeeze this one in right down here. Then we can fit probably one more under that one, and maybe one more behind this one, and maybe even one over there in that little hole. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, that's great. We have stacks of Mustang. I hope none of them are leaking oil. That's the downside to stacking cars, is if they leak oil, they'll drip oil on the thing, then you gotta wash it off. Yep, stacking the Mustangs. That one needs a new rear bumper. It needs one with the cutouts for the exhaust. And you can see here, we do not have the cutouts. Yipper. All right, Mustang keys, key keys, those are good. What else can come inside? Ah, I have the little Mazda. That one can come inside. This one is waiting for pickup. I've been done with this one for several weeks now. It nearly had a, a full mechanical restoration of the drivetrain. It smells good in here. Restarting the engine. Yeah. All right, let's get this bad unit into the shop here. Roll it on in. I wonder if we can squeeze this one in behind the Mustang. I hope it's short enough to reach or to fit, to reach and fit. If not, we'll have to drive it under that one. You know what, I'm out of order. That one needs to go up and I need to put a BMW under that car. So this one can come in last. We're backing back out. 
changing my thought process on the fly here. Backing up, backing up, backing up. Trying again. But I guess that's fine. We'll let this thing have a little bit of run time. It has not run much since we, uh, we got her back together. So you sit here and idle for a while. Let's go fetch the keys for that BMW. Yeah, that's right. I have a BMW here. There's the key. Let's see if she's going to start too. This one has been in the off position for about three weeks. And I have yet to even uh, look at this BMW. So this is a first view for all of us, I guess. I don't even know what this is. I think it's a 528i. Beginning engine starting sequence now. Key on. Whoa, the air was stinky. Ugh. I can tell you we have 133,275 miles on the BMW odometer. A little rattly on startup. All right. Window. Ah, look at that. The window goes down, but it does not want to go back up. That could have been a fail. That, that was a fail. It's definitely going to have to come inside now. Oh no! Needs window regulator for driver's front. Okay. Reverse. Oh, this thing's rear wheel drive. All right, we're looking good under this vehicle. We have space and clearance and we cleared all of our tires. Let's go ahead and park this one and shut her down. Pew. It's like a whole video of a bunch of pews. Okay, last vehicular module. I think we can fit this one in. AC's nice and cold in here. And then once this is in, we're gonna move all the loose items uh, inside and then we're gonna, we're gonna shut her down and close her up because uh, we're not working tomorrow. I think I'm gonna have to get this one in at, a, at an angle here. Just kind of stick it in this hole between the two cars. Troy, am I clear out back yet? We're in? All right, a little bit farther. Yeah, we're good here. Parking's this auto, windows up. A lot of cars. I've never had this many cars in the shop. What are we at? Two, four, six. I have seven cars inside of the building. That's awesome. You know what? Let's pull the tow truck up because it does have some water breaches here. And I'd really rather not fill this with water until it's a, it's complete. Here we go. Okay. Let's fire this bad unit up real quick. Ignition keys. In neutral position. Beep. Clutch it. Crank it. Nice, she lives. Ooh. Air brakes off. And we're looking for first gear right here. A little tight squeeze on our right hand side. See the mirror? Perfect. Clearing up all the vehicles. There we go. Smooth. Bring her all the way up to the door right here. That'll be good protection for the door and the paint on the truck. Right, right about here. We're good. Perfect. Air brakes. Powering down. Okie dokes, nearly everything is put away in its proper locations. I have all the flashlights and all the batteries and some of the chargers and some of the extra flashlights, a few hand tools. I've got a complete tool set uh, at the house already in case I need that. So let's get this thing 
loaded in the van with the light bars and all my floodlights. That way, if we do have a power outage tonight, I have standby electrons uh, already already prepped and in position here. So we got the two big light bars. There's already another one at the house. A box of batteries. Got an extra fan, so we're good here. Bucket full of straps. I'll need that thing later on after the storm. Let's see, we've taken the shelves and everything on the wall here and gotten rid of that stuff. That's all inside. Moved in, that way it can't blow around. Uh, we brought the fan inside. Ooh, my pack out. Do I need my pack out box? I don't think I do. Mm. No, no, I don't need that. That's just gonna be in the way. Ah, the floodlight, we need the big floodlight, just in case. Well, I don't know if I need it, but I might need it. It's possible. So I think I've taken the phrase two is one and one is none to an entirely new level here, I think. But hey, it's better to be prepared than uh, to find yourself without, oh, battery charger. I want that off the ground just in case some water comes in here. So we'll put you up there. That's good and safe. And it's door closing time. Let's batten down the hatches and get her all buttoned up. Loud noises. All right, there's a the lock. Should have another lock on this side. Might need those. And I guess this is when we find out if this door and my pylons are going to be as a uh, as strong as we need them to be. Folks were concerned about the integrity of, uh, of this wall once upon a time. I'm pretty sure it's not going anywhere, but uh, I guess we're about to find out, aren't we? So let's see, fans powered down. Everything's disconnected from the wall. Let's go ahead and pull this extension cord. We don't need that. Get rid of you. And yeah, we're, uh, Subaru's good. Everything expensive's off the ground. No electronics is down below. Cars are all set. Locks are set. Tow truck is in. Yeah, we're, we're done here. All right, door number two, coming down. Uh, that one, I do not think it has locks at the bottom, so I'm gonna have to, uh, to engineer something here to secure the bottom of this door a little bit. I would hate for it to get uh, blown open. Actually, this side, yeah, that side has a lock, okay. So that's at least one to go through. Yeah, that's one lock. We can use a screwdriver or a pry bar. That'll do it. Pry bar, this one, that should work. Pry bar is for everything. Here, we'll just stuff that through the hole here and that, that will lock the door in. There we go. That door's not going anywhere. Just like that. All right, shop, powering down. Let's get rid of the fan and the lights and the radio. One more fan, one more light screen, and we're out. We're out of here. Power strip time. Shut down. In case we get some lightning, just unplug that one. Why not? Okay, office looks good. There's really nothing I can do in here, so I think we're all set here. Alrighty. Alrighty, shop powering down. Light clickage. Pew. Alrighty, folks, we're headed out. The deeds are done. The lot is clear. The shop is secure, the forklift is wrapped up, the van is running. I'm gonna go see if I cannot find a little bit of fuel for this thing on the way out, and I am going home. So that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and close this video out right now. I will do such things as always by thanking each and every one of you guys for watching this video. Certainly hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please feel free to comment down below on what you thought here. Are we gonna make it? Is the storm gonna be okay? Is the shop gonna be okay? I think so. What do you guys think? So again, go ahead and weigh in in the comment section down below. Do not forget to tap that like button while you're down there. And most importantly, have yourself a safe hurricane. See you guys later in the video, in the day, in the transmission. What is it like? It's like 70 miles, right? How fast is it moving? 14 miles per hour?
that's good. Now we got a good wind blocker from the house, so I don't have to put up my shutters. I don't feel like doing plywood today. Perfect. All right, truck parked, systems power down, lights off, that off, AC's off, everybody's turned off. Shut down. Okay, so yeah, the wind is gonna be coming from the south, headed into that direction. It might be coming from the southeast just slightly. So this is kind of going to be broadside on it. Then there's a chance that it can actually push water in through the door seals. But the reason that this is here is to give some broadside protection from the trailer. That way the house does not see all the wind and then I don't have to put up my shutters. That's kind of the plan here. So the trailer is super heavy. I have stuff inside of it. A lot of stuff. Yeah, freak out, Locust. You're almost done with. So if this is our wind direction, then uh, actually I might back that up some to give more coverage here. I have windows down over there, but these right here are just screens. So I, I want to cover this area. I can't park the trailer right here because that is septic drain field. So it's got to be back a little bit, but that's fine. Cause if something gets crazy and it blows over now, it can't blow over onto my house. Smart thinking.